Hello everyone, good day. Previously we have learnt on the theory of composite steel structure. By now, you should be able to understand the behaviour of composite structure and what it comprises of. And identified the difference between composite and non-composite structures. Now, let's go through some design example of composite steel structures. Before we begin, this video is just to recall and give you clearer idea on composite construction. Over the deck. The deck acts as permanent shuttering and spans in a direction transverse to the secondary beams. Primary and secondary beams in composite steel frames are rigidly connected to the floor slabs by shear studs, which are connected to the beams by through deck welding techniques. This allows the floor slab and the beams beneath to act compositely. Beam depths are therefore less than in equivalent non-composite frames. We should acknowledge that the steel beam will undergo two stages. The first is during construction, in which during construction the steel beam wire mesh would be installed and followed by the installation of wet concrete. And the second is during composite stage. Composite stage is the condition whereby the wet concrete has fully dry and set. At the composite stage, the steel beam and reinforced concrete deck or slab are acting compositely. The beam will act compositely under action load, in which the top of the composite beam will be acting under compression. Meanwhile, the bottom part of the composite beam will be acting in tension. As the top of the steel beam is restrained by the reinforced concrete deck or slab, therefore, the steel composite beam, which has fully set, is categorized as fully laterally restrained beam. Therefore, a composite steel beam must be designed and verify for both construction and composite stages. OK, let's do some example design of composite steel beam. Here are the details of the composite steel structures that we need to design. Beam span length is 9 meter. Beam spacing is 3.5 meter. Depth of slab is 150 millimeter. The steel beam is proposed to be 457, 152 and 52 grade S275. Depth of concrete above profile is 55 millimeter. For the concrete details, the normal weight concrete grade is C3037 FCK is 30 and slash millimeters squared. The shear connectors is proposed as shown on the top right of this slide. And this is the reinforcement details. Step 1. Calculate the design values for combined actions. What are the load? that need to be considered during construction stage. The actions to be considered during the construction stage are given in BR 1991 part 116. For permanent actions, we must consider allowance for beam self white, mesh and sheeting profile. Meanwhile, for variable actions, we need to consider the weight of wet or fresh concrete and allowance for construction load for design beam. Construction loads must be considered. For example, the concreting operation during the weight concrete and the personnel equipment that must be supported by the bare steel structure. Meanwhile, for the construction stage, the permanent action that must be considered are slab dry concrete, self weight of the sheeting profile, mesh, beam self weight, ceiling and services. Variable action must consider movable partitions and occupancy floor load. OK class. Now let's sketch based on the given info. The top figure is the plan view of the composite beam. While the bottom figure shows the cross section view of the composite beam section. Uh, once all the required actions have been identified, next. We need to design the actions at construction and composite stage. 
Let's first calculate the design at construction stage for permanent and variable actions. The total permanent and variable actions are 1.455 knots slash m and 11.13 knots slash m respectively. Next, let's calculate the design actions at composite stage for permanent and variable actions. The total permanent and variable actions are 15.805 knots slash m and 16.8 knots slash m respectively. For the serviceability limit state, SLS listed here are the design load that must be considered in order to determine the deflection. Once the design actions have been calculated, for both construction and composite stage, therefore our next step is to determine the maximum design bending moment and shear forces for both stages. From the loads that have been calculated earlier, we determined that, at construction stage, the design load is 18.66 knots slash m. Meanwhile, Maximum design moment and shear forces are 188.93 kN-m and 83.97 kN respectively. Meanwhile, at the composite stage, from the calculation earlier, the design load is 44.94 knots slash m. Meanwhile, maximum design moment and shear forces are 455.02 kN meter and 202.23 kN respectively next in step 3 list the all the section properties required listed here are the required section properties for universal steel beam 457 152 and 52 grade s 275 Next step, is the cross-section classification. In this step, carry out the same check, as has been carried out in Topic 1, Design of Restrained and Unrestrained Beam. Refer to Table 5.2, EC3, Part 11, we, finally determined that the flange in the web of the beam is categorized under Class 1 respectively. Once the cross-section has been classified, we then now, continue for the next step, which is design resistance for the construction stage. The design resistance at the construction stage means, you need to verify the resistance of the proposed beam due to shear buckling check, vertical shear resistance, bending resistance, and buckling resistance. Okay, let's carry out the first check. That is shear buckling check. The shear buckling resistance of a new and encased web should be verified using section 5 of EC3 part 15. If only, the equation in the red box is satisfies. From the calculation, we can conclude that the shear buckling of the web does not need to be verified as the results did not fulfill the given condition in the red box. Next. We need to verify the vertical shear resistance of the proposed beam. EC3, Part 11, Clause 6.2.61, Equation 6.17, provide the guideline in verifying the vertical shear resistance. VPLRD which is the plastic resistance design can be calculated based on EC3, Part 11, Clause 6.2.62, Equation 6. In which of E is the shear area and is determined, as given in EC3, Part 11, Clause 6.2.62, Equation 6. The slide shows the detail requirement for vertical shear resistance design and the shear area of the considered beam. Once the shear area has been calculated, we then need to substitute the value into the equation VPLRD. And finally give the results of 578.5 kN. Verify that, the ratio of the maximum design shear force, over the plastic resistance design, must be lesser than 1. In which, in this case the shear resistance of the cross section is adequate. Ok, the next things, is to verify the resistance of the proposed cross section towards bending. This can be referred to EC3, 
Clause 6.2.5.1, Equation 6.12. As you can see here, the resistance towards bending must satisfy the condition given in the red box, in which the ratio of the maximum design moment over the moment capacity must be less than 1. It is also highlighted in EC4, Clause 6.2.2.1.1. The requirement on the reduction towards bending moment resistance must be carried out if the 50% of the calculated VPLRD is lesser than the design shear force VD. However, in our case, no reduction in the bending moment resistance of the steel section need to be accounted for in any point throughout the beam. Based on the C3 clause 6.2.5.1. Equation 6.13. The design resistance to bending moment for class 1 and class 2 cross section is calculated based on the equation shows in the red box. Once the design bending moment resistance has been calculated, insert the value into the equation 6. Hence, we can conclude that the bending moment resistance is adequate. The next check is buckling resistance, however, as the steel sheeting provides continuous restraint to the top flange of the steel beam, thus, the beam is not susceptible to lateral torsional buckling.